Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Maker's Cave. And today, we're going to be talking about measuring. Uh, because we have a new tool in the shop. Uh, you can't be a maker without wanting to measure something somewhere. And I've got the full, like any maker, full complement of uh, measuring devices. i got the Toyo uh, calipers, both uh, metric and, you know, imperial. I've got ones to hold, you know, measure pipe measure flatness going across use this on the CNC and right down you know the stainless steel uh, ruler with metric and inches and tape measures and more calipers uh, I had some digital calipers around here I wanted to show you but I can't seem to find it and uh, one of the advantages of, a, of these calipers over digital calipers you, you never ever have to go and find a battery a few months ago on uh, Kickstarter and you know a lot of people don't like to take try things on Kickstarter but I I personally like it because it's I like to see companies start out and I like to be part of that that you know growth of a product you know so anyway Hozo Designs did a let me make sure I got the name right yes Hozo Design H-O-Z-O -O. Uh, they crowdfunded on Kickstarter the Neo Ruler uh, which is kind of like a caliper but also like a slide rule uh, as far as measuring and I thought it was really neat because again it was digital yes you need batteries but it is rechargeable um, I think it's rechargeable well, I guess we'll find out um, but it was it was really cool uh, so I figured I'd back it uh, and then they also sent me some accessories that went with this and a case. So uh, let me, you know, instead of talking about this, let's just show you what it is. Here it is. It's all very nice metal. Very well put together. Uh, there's a rubber strip along here. So it won't move. So let's turn it on. There we go. As you can see, it's a very sturdy design, like I said. Now let's zoom in here so you can see the... This has got a really nice display on it. it tells you the battery life left. Uh, as I, There's also some Bluetooth features, which we're going to go over. And there's also uh, the ruler indicators here. Now, here, like I said, here's your display. It's got the two little rulers. We're going to hit this middle round button and it's going to show us that we are in inches with a one-to-one -one scale so what we'll do is we will put here we'll turn it this way bring another ruler up here and we'll line this up And we'll slide this over to what looks like two. And look, there you go, 1.95. So this is one way you can use this is by laying it mostly for architectural drawings. And look, it's really cool, really smooth. Let me go up to seven here. Whoop. Lined right up at seven. Really cool. Oh, let me bring it back here. We're back for a little screen again. And we're going to come back over to one in the middle. And now you've got millimeters. And you got centimeters. And you got meters. And just to show you that this is really one to one meters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to slide this again. You know what? We'll flip this around. That's roughly where the centimeter starts. So we'll go up to five centimeters. And as you can see, it's 0 0.05 meters, which would be correct. And again, what we'll do is we'll go back and choose the meter. And now we'll go to inches again. 
inches and fractions. This is neat. So the other one was just inches. Let me show you this real quick. All right, so we're zeroed out now. There's inches, fractions. So we're going to move this up. Now it measures you in fractions. So we'll go to there, two and three sixteenths. That's pretty cool. Now we're going to bring this back down here, zero it out, up to the heading again, and millimeters, which is where we want to be. I want to show you millimeters because this is gra this uh, steel roll is graduated to millimeters is the sign I have here. So I'm going to go up to what looks like two to me, and there you go, 19.5, which is you know pretty darn close to two. You know, it's hard for me to find out exactly where the end is here. I know it's kind of hard to see on the screen, but on the video, but this screen is really incredible. I, it's really easy to read. I really am digging how you can slide this across like this and get a reading. I received along with this a caliper conversion kit so you can actually turn this into a caliper. Let's go and put the calipers on. First thing we'll do is get this out of the box. Nice little manual. And again, this is really a nice, well-designed, beefy ruler. This is really nice. And the same with these calipers, really high-grade milled aluminum, and it is just nice. So these are all your parts to convert this thing with some calipers. And this is why I bought, you know, um, two of them. Because I have this one. I have another one, too. And because when I was reading up when I was backing this, that you could add the calipers. And you actually had to do some conversion to get the calipers on here. And I don't want to switch back between, you know, the scale here and the caliper. So I bought two so I could leave one set up completely as a caliper. So, let's start the conversion. And they even give you some extra or some screws to do the conversion. And they even give you a little tiny star screwdriver here. Now, to start the conversion process, pro <laughs> in order to start the conversion process, the first thing I do is you got to take the end piece here off, which is why they give you a little screwdriver here. Once the screw's out, you take the end cap off. Now it's very important that when you're doing this, I have the slider all the way over all the way over here because you do not want to make sure that comes out or else well, here you go. You don't want to make sure that slider comes all the way out because you'll never get it back in, and if you do, the calibration will be off. Now that you have this end piece taken off, you take your new end piece. That they gave you and just put that in here now in the little bag of parts they give you these the tiny little screw here so what you do is you put this tiny little screw in the upper hole here it's up for you there's two holes and these tiny little screws go in each one of them Now there's one more hole remaining up here, and for that you bring back one of the screws you took out. All the screws are in now. Now you take this piece, piece that was in your caliper kit, a little screw here you gotta loosen up, and it slides right in. And then once it's all the way up and in place, just tighten this thumb screw. You can already see what we're talking about as far as the caliper goes. Now that you have this one end of the caliper on here, you go back into your kit. You get the other side of the caliper. You turn it over. There's a lock and unlock. You move the switch to the unlock. You lift this little lid up here. You flip this over. Okay, and here's your slide. Now you carefully pull 
forward on the slide and the cover of the slide comes off you'll see there's a little piece of metal right there and that is going to live right in there so you pick this up slide it on just like that you bring the lid up flip it over you want to move this to the lock position and now you'll notice that the little door back here is locked and you can see what's happening here right and then also in your parts there's a little thumb screw we'll hold up the top here on the door and what that does is that keeps the caliper where you want it to once you have your reading so now this little thumb wheel moves it for precise measuring and you can also move for your gross now that we have this all assembled with our caliper you and you're back to our main menu we're going to use the button over here on the right as you can see different functions change over here on the screen and you want to get to where you have the gear symbol for setup push the circle and you notice the first thing it has right here is for a caliper setting once you have it the caliper highlighted you select it by pushing the circle and it changes to what mode you want right now we're in the ruler mode but we're changing this over to caliper so we hit the button on the right, square button. So now the caliper is highlighted. We push the circle button to select it. Move. Let me turn this around for you. Move slider to calibrate. So we'll slide to calibrate, just like we did with the ruler. I was holding onto it. Let's slide it all the way down here. Push any button. And there we go. And we're back here. So now we are at caliper mode. All right, we're back using the keys. We got back to inches. And now if we move this, you'll see the numbers change. Bring that a little closer here. Now this is the one, two, three block. This should be about one inch. Well, it's actually supposed to be one inch. So at zero here, we're going to move this out. Point ninety nine. Wow, pretty good. All right, this should be two inches. one point ninety nine and the three inch side two point ninety nine well wow, that's really good and of course on this side you can measure the inside of something hmm. let's see oh we will measure the inside of the lid of the box that the calibers came into three point one one inches I really like this. I, I do have digital calipers. Now, I'll, I will admit that this is a little bigger than, you know, this caliper here, which is, you know, your analog style dial caliper. And, you know, a digital caliper isn't too much different from this. This is bigger, but I like the reading. I think I get more accuracy out of this uh, than a standard digital caliper. Uh, it's like a dual purpose. Now, as you saw on when we were going through this, there's Bluetooth features. I'm going to show you what the Bluetooth features are all about because I think this is really what makes this thing stand out. Now, in order for the Bluetooth functions, you got to download their Hoso's app, which is the Mizor app. So there's one for both Android and Apple. I obviously have an iPhone, so we'll install this. All right, we've got it installed. Once we Allow me to use Bluetooth and send notifications. I'll say yes to both. And there's a little thing here for my projects. 
new rule it says I was connected successfully so we're going to move this to the side let's let's see if that's true so we added the Neo ruler that was simple I thought I was going to do some setup on the ruler but I didn't I pushed connect and it found the thing and it connected right up and what I like let me zoom out a little bit you can all the settings that you can do through the buttons you can actually do uh, through the Bluetooth so it's a little bit easier um, rotation is the caliper standard power setting here's your different um, scales that you can use now that we have the app open I wanted to show you one of the reasons why I really wanted this when I read the description is you can do your own custom scales I have a, um, a model of the Nomad Android from the original series of Star Trek and I've always wanted to build this but you know sizing was always a problem is, is the scale uh, he's about four foot tall from the tip to the bottom uh, I, I'm gonna I can always get an exact overall height but never the intermediate dimen uh, dimensions so we can do custom scales on here so what you do is you push new we're going to be doing inches I'm going to put this up here we are going to measure ignore the fact that it says millimeters So this model is 5.3 inches long. We're going to click next. Input actual length. Okay, its actual length is 48. Oh, so what I did is I pushed the triple zero and now I can put in 48. Wait, let's back up here. Here we go, 48.00 inches. We're going to do done. We're going to do next. So the scale, look at what the scale is. The scale is 1 to 9.05. So we're going to do done. And that, here's our new scale. So now I think what you do is we're going to push that. Look at that. Now we'll switch this over to inches, I think. Okay, so with the new conversion, his width is 10.27 inches. So now I can get exactly what I need to do for all the different pieces of Nomad. Uh, let's see, we can let's do his head. It's going to be kind of tough, but I'll eye it up. Oop. Head is 7.52 inches. The disc of his head. eight point five six inches I mean there's all we did the whole overall head I can actually do just what this top part is so that's only 2.89 inches roughly I'm doing a lot of fast and dirty measurements but I'm just showing you how you can do the scale um, now if I want to measure what this bevel is two inches that to me is the deal maker I don't have to sit here anymore and do conversions this is especially good for all my the robot building I'm going to do and the scale things up uh, or to scale things down this is just that's incredible I, I, I this is so cool now there are some other things that came with this ruler that I wanted to show you. Because now all of a sudden we're back to one that doesn't have the caliber. This is my second one that I bought. Now here's some of the 
extra things that they sent me. First one, this is really nice if you're if you're working with architectural drawings. You can replace the pointer. Take that off. Slide this one on. I'm gonna put a piece of tape down here. I'm gonna put some markings on here. But this is a little magnifying glass in here. And if you can notice, there's a, a lining pin right there. So you can really line up. So we have that right on that black line. So now we can move this up to this line to get a real good exact reading. And it's 0.63 inches. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this on here. Now we're going to slide this off again. And one of the other things that came with these two additional sliding tools here of different sizes, and they are for marking pens and pencils. Now that we have the little pen thing, we're going to bring this all the way up. It's showing zero inches over here. We're going to lay this. I've got a little marking pen here. And we are going to bring this all the way up to 1.25. Lift the pen up. And there you go. There's your mark. Didn't do it here. It actually started over here. But at least you've got a starting and ending point. Uh, I think it's because I'm trying to draw on this painter's tape. It's not sticking. So that's pretty cool. I don't know how often I'll use that feature, but I will, without a doubt, use the conversion feature. So here's both of mine set up. Obviously, one for the calipers, like I showed you, and another one I shut up, I set up uh, for just flat reading. These are really cool. Um, like I said, you know, I love when you get something off of Kickstarter and it works. I backed it based on what the specs were. I thought the company was good. Uh, I talked to the company. The communication was excellent. Um, it's going to really help me when I want to take my small scale stuff and make it big. It's also going to work when probably when I want to take my large scale stuff, stop my large scale stuff, and make it smaller. I will definitely put a link below to this cool tool. I, I like I said before, it's just really cool when you back something and it actually works. This is really great when you want to do through some 3D printing and get your accuracy down. Again, uh, the infinite scales is just a selling point for me to be able to set your own custom scale and get exactly what you need when you're designing because that's always the hard part. We have to create cases. So here's a, a nano and a screw terminal board. And sometimes we have to make custom cases for these. We no longer have to guess what the measurements are. And again, I could do that with the Metatoyo uh, nice dial. I use this for very super small stuff. You know, that's what these are really good for, getting down to that one-tenth of an inch. But for 3D printing, right here, 2.14 inches, you know. Um, and here's millimeters, which is really what I use when I use Tinkercad to design stuff. I really need to know what stuff is in millimeters. So when you're 3D printing, this is could be a real lifesaver. So I would definitely recommend this. Like I said, I'll put a link below to where you can get this on Amazon. Um, if you do decide to get it on Amazon and you click the link below, it does help sponsor this channel. Um, you know, so if you want to help us out, click that link below if you're going to, to buy one. That's it for the Begafon. Um, I think that's it. Uh, this was kind of a, another one of my infamous rambling reviews, but... You know, I get ahead of myself when I get excited, and I really, really love these. I can't wait to start using these in the real world. Um, we've got a lot of designing of cases coming up, so we're going to do that. Plus, you're going to see us do uh, some little to big uh, builds, and so you're going to be seeing us using this all quite a bit uh, for the scale conversions. So that's it. Links will be below. I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave, and I'll see you at the next one.